Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What's up, guys? Me, Jim, and you're back another reaction video. All right, we're doing uh, Epic History TV video. I'm going to be very sad when I've reacted to all of these. Um, but yeah, I know it's going to be a great video, and uh, it's about a topic I'm very interested in. I wish... I have a feeling this is going to be very much like what I would love to see about ships. Does that make sense? I mean... I've, I'm just, I'm interested in the, like, 15th century to mid-19th century ships. I just want to know how they evolved to what they were at, like, the Battle of Trafalgar or something, or Napoleonic Wars. Like, how they, how all the different sails, like, when they were added and what the purpose is and all the different cargo holds and, like, the captains. I'm just, I'm super interested in that, interested, and... If any of you guys know a good video like that, then I would love to see it. But I'm assuming this is going to be something like that, but for castles. Let's see. Uh, this is Thomas. Tommy, uh, he's still uh, chilling with us. So let's get right into it. Pay attention. If you're not ready to learn, you know the drill. There's the door. Get out. Or just chill. That's fine, too. All right, let's do it. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Link the at the... You'll see it, like, without even at the, <laughs> I can't talk, without even having to click the show more. It'll just be right there. Join the Discord. It's great. Um, uh, we'd love to have you pull up a chair. More the merrier. All right, let's do it. In Europe's Middle Ages, castles dominated not just warfare, but society itself. Strongholds are as old as war. But the medieval castle was unique. A refuge and a projection of military force. A lordly residence and symbol of power. A center of justice and government. Today, castle ruins are found from the Atlantic coast to the hills of Syria. Dramatic and poignant reminders of a lost feudal world. There was no single blueprint for the castle. Every one was unique. But by analyzing key trends over four centuries, Epic History TV is proud to present its guide to building the perfect castle. I gotta take a piss. I'll be right back. I got a snack too. All right. Let's learn about castles. Let's go. It's Pay attention. Four Thomas. Centuries. Epic History TV is proud to present its guide to building the perfect castle. Let's do it. The medieval castle was the product of a feudal world. A world we'll explore with help from our video sponsor, Crusader Kings 3. Using the in-game map... Whoa. We can zoom in on 9th century France, the birthplace of feudalism. I love stuff like this. This was a time when royal authority was in crisis, as Frankish kings, the heirs of Charlemagne, struggled to control unruly nobles and fight off Viking armies. Increasingly, the king would grant a piece of land to kings, the heirs of Charlemagne. This was a time when royal authority was in crisis, as Frankish kings, the heirs of Charlemagne, struggled to control unruly nobles and fight off Viking armies. Increasingly, the king would grant a piece of land known as a fief and the promise of protection to a lord. The lord became the king's vassal, swearing an protection to a lord. The Lord became the King's vassal, swearing an oath of loyalty or fealty and providing military service when required. These feudal okay. lords began to build fortified bases across the land in which to live and from which to impose their authority on their new domains. These were the terrain forest supply limit. This looks pretty First, cool. Medieval castles. If you'd like to experience the challenge of feudal lordship for yourself, I might really can check recommend that out. Crusader Kings 3. Is this a long ad? It's entirely up to you. Character in Crusader of Dynastic. Link in our. 
That really does look amazing. Find out more. Guys, I have a screen here and here, but I'll, I'm probably just focus on this one. But if I look over here, I didn't miss anything. Forts are either fortified by nature or by human hand, true. Or by both, which is considered stronger. Find a good natural barrier, make it even better. Through clever engineering, nice. Um, Vegetius. De Re Militari, book 4, C, 400, C. When building a new castle, the first and most out. important consideration okay. is location. Building a new castle, the first and most important consideration is location. A castle should dominate the landscape, with good views in all directions, so hills are ideal. Steep slopes or... and river bends can be used to limit approach routes. I really gotta shut up. Steep slopes and river bends can be used to limit approach routes, making the site easier to defend. And for building work, a local face? source of stone, wood and soil is essential, as transporting these materials over medieval roads is more expensive than the materials themselves. There must also be a secure local source of fresh water and food to sustain the castle's occupants. All right, I am pausing. I don't know where this is from, but I think it's a real battle. Somewhere in the Middle East. Where there was this fortress or town, or whatever you want to call it. I feel like it's too small to be a town, but too big to be a fortress. On top of this big plateau. And there was really no way onto the plateau except going up this winding, zigzagging trail up to the top fin that's extremely easy to defend. But um, who was, whoever was attacking it was building this giant ramp up to it. But the problem is... Sorry. The problem is like how, how much water and food do you have and weapons... Uh, to stay up there because if there's this giant army and they just encircle you even if you have the best defensive uh, Position and you made it perfect the way to get up very small There's only so much time before you run out of food. And so there's really no perfect thing Unless you have a nice escape route um, If there's this giant army encircling you so I've probably... There must also be a secure local source of fresh water and food to sustain the castle's occupants a reliable starter castle is the Mott and Bailey, popular with the Normans, who built hundreds across England and Wales. The Mott and Bailey, popular with the Normans, who built hundreds across England and Wales during the Norman Conquest. The Mott is a mound, either natural or built by hand, as seen here in the bio tapestry. It's not just a pile of mud, though. These colored bands are thought to represent alternating layers of stone and clay, which will increase Good stability. Foundation. Sometimes they even used stone or timber foundations. A typical mot is 8 meters high and up to 50 meters across. Its top can be defended by a simple wooden palisade and a tower, living quarters for the Lord and his entourage and last refuge in case of attack. An earth ditch and palisade should enclose the bailey to protect important buildings such as a hall, stables, kitchen, stores, and a forge. Timber palisades are vulnerable to forge. Timber palisades are vulnerable to fire and rot, so will ideally be replaced by an enclosing stone wall. This known channel as a is so wall, good. As soon as possible. This creates the enceinte, or main defensive enclosure. A curtain wall should have crenellations to protect soldiers of the garrison during an attack as they shoot their bows or crossbows at the enemy. 
So that's why a they're concealed like... postern gate or sally port can be used during a siege to smuggle messages in and out of the castle or was at the enemy. A concealed postern gate or sally port can be used during a siege to smuggle messages in and out of the castle or to launch surprise attacks on the enemy. You better be able to close that up quick if they find it. Within the fortress ought to be one principal tower built in the stoutest manners and fortified as strongly as possible. In parts of France, such Sorry, as Anjou... who said that? Leon Battista Alberti. In parts of France, such as Anjou and Poitou, castle builders ignored the Mott and Bailey approach and constructed strong stone towers. In French, it's called a donjon, the origin of the word dungeon. The little pegs, right, I believe, are used as, um, like, wasn't that like the staging for the scaffolding, how they would build it higher? In England, it's known as the keep. I missed that. All right, sorry. In French, it's not. called a donjon, the origin of the word dungeon. In England, it's known as the keep. A keep offers better security and accommodation than a wooden tower. But if you try to build one on top of a mot, its weight will cause it to collapse. Some opt for a compromise, a shell keep, which keeps the mot and replaces its wooden palisade with a circular stone wall. But a truly imposing keep will have to be built from scratch on carefully prepared foundations. A typical Seeing stuff like this makes me think of like all the mistakes they must have made on the way up. Like the first ones, they must have started collapsing, and they had to figure out like, oh, well, what what happened there? The foundation wasn't good, and then either either find a better one, or or put stone and and timber, wood, whatever, to make it better. It just it's it's cool how you know this must have evolved so many times and. Over generations, they just figured out ways to not uh, build the castle and um, improve on it. Early Fast stone way. keep is rectangular, between two and four stories high, with walls up to six meters thick. What? Construction might take up to ten what? years and cost of between two and four stories high, with walls up to six meters thick. Construction might For take strength? up to ten years and cost a fortune, so large keeps are only Ten built years. by monarchs and powerful nobles. That's a nice one. The biggest keeps have towers at each corner. Within, there might be a hall for meals and entertainment, private apartments, a chapel, and storeroom. Hold on, did I just... Monarchs and powerful nobles. The biggest keeps have towers real. at each corner. All right. Within, there might be a hall for meals and entertainment, private apartments. The biggest keeps have towers at each corner. Within, there might be a hall for meals and entertainment, private apartments, a chapel, and storerooms. A four building creates an impressive and well-guarded entrance, which should be at first floor level accessed by a wooden staircase, which can be removed in case of attack. If the keep has a cellar, this is an ideal space to store extra provisions. Why not for chaining up prisoners in the dungeons of popular imagination? Early keeps are square or rectangular, but later come in many shapes and sizes. King Philippe Augustus of France was particularly fond of circular keeps. That's a nice one. That circular spire right there. Well Perhaps done. the most eye-catching of all is Castel del Monte in southern Italy, built by Emperor Frederick II. Its elaborate polygonal structure reminds us that the perfect castle must be elegant as well as formidable. Focus more on the formidable. Towers are to project forward so that when the enemy approaches, they may be wounded by missiles from the towers. Veruvius, the architecture of one. The curtain wall should be strengthened by flanking towers at regular intervals. The curtain wall should be strengthened by flanking towers at regular intervals. 
These project forward from the wall, so archers can shoot at attacking enemies with enfilade fire. Or, put another way, attackers will come under fire from the wall ahead of them, as well as from towers to the right and left. Square towers offer large amounts of extra space for living quarters and storage. But their corners are a weak point that can be targeted by enemy stone-throwing artillery, such as a trebuchet. You can target the corners? I didn't know they were that accurate. So round towers may be a better option. The choice is often one of taste, fashion, and or. So round towers may be a better So that's like when, just like an arch, like when a heavy object hits this, it kind of distributes the weight or the pressure on the whole wall better option. for some other reason. The choice is often one of taste, fashion, and or cost. It's a big boy. Square towers, round towers, and D-shaped towers were all common across Europe, and many castles feature a mix of types. In some places, it was possible to cut costs by reusing old Roman fortifications. It's nice grass as at right there. And I like a nice lawn. It's nice. In some places, it was possible to cut costs by reusing old Roman fortifications, as at Pevensey Interesting. and Porchester on England's south coast. Using like the uh, here, the Normans simply built ones. a stone keep within the walls of an old Roman shore fort. That's saving. cool. So there's got to be a lot of examples. If you said this and I missed it, my bad. Of old castles that, if you were to chip away from them, would have a layer that's even older, and maybe even older than that, depending on how many times it was reused. Um, that's that's cool. In time, labor, and money. Loopholes, or arrow slits, are important additions for any tower or wall section. I wasn't sure if that was for, like, ventilation or just light. The earliest versions are simple vertical slits. That's nice. But from the 14th century, more decorative cross shapes are common. In the event of a... Why not make, like, I'm sure they have a reason. They, uh, they definitely know more than I would. Um, but, oh, kind of like they have there. But instead of vertical, why not have more horizontal, small slits? Again, there had to have been a reason. Um, just so that, like with horizontal, maybe more people could be side by side, the archers. Siege, wooden hoardings, sometimes called bratis work, can be built out over the walls to allow the garrison to rain boiling water and rocks onto the attacking enemy. Add a barbecue. Barbican before the uh, the gate and place it and place in its entrance a portcullis. The obvious focus. Add a barbican. What did it call it? Bratis work can be built out over the walls to allow the garrison to rain boiling water and rocks onto the attacking enemy. I was hoping it said it so I could. A barbican before the gate and place in its entrance a portcullis which hangs on iron chains and ropes. Same book as before. The obvious focus for an attack is the castle's main gate. So its defenses, known as the gatehouse, must be especially strong. The ideal solution is to add towers on each side of the main gate. So its defenses, known as the gatehouse, must be especially strong. The ideal solution is to add towers on each side of the gateway. To add an outer and inner gate, and at least one, if not several, portcullises. These metal lattice gates... Sorry, I just, I think I solved my own question. I bet you structurally maybe putting horizontal lines for arrows in the stone maybe it weakened it more than a vertical one would hey. sorry Ed. the ideal solution is to add towers on each side of the gateway to add an outer and inner gate and at least one if not several portcullises these metal lattice gates can be dropped vertically to trap attackers in a kill zone the garrison can then use murder holes in the ceiling and walls murder to finish holes? off the intruders. 
The main gate can be further protected by a drawbridge over the outer moat or ditch, which can be raised by chains as an enemy approaches. I'm assuming they had like a cranking wheel. Through the Middle Ages, gatehouses became increasingly powerful. With Those windows are too big. Gates and portcullises. The approach covered by looming towers and every wall and ceiling studded with loopholes. Sorry, just what's the point of the spikes? I'm assuming it's just for intimidation. Maybe it's because the. I'm ass obviously, they stick into the ground and something to lock it. And maybe um, if it was more of a square peg, it might not um, fall right into the uh, hole um, down perfectly and therefore could lift up the gate and a point would probably make it easier to to make sure it doesn't fail to fall in because i mean it's not going to be used as like a tool to to drop on someone as like a one-time thing i bet you that's it i bet you it's just the pointed things were more likely to get inserted into the outlet at the bottom when you drop it because they it can't be that precise with medieval you know technology I, it's very impressive i'm just I feel like that's why. Portcullisingly powerful, with multiple drawbridges, gates, and portcullises. The approach covered by looming towers, and every wall and ceiling studded with loopholes and murder holes. Some of the most formidable gatehouses are found in the castles built by Edward I to subdue Wales in the late 13th century. Such imposing wall defences began to make a massive keep seem superfluous, so many of these castles were built without a keep at all. Our castle is now an imposing fortress, able to withstand a siege of several months, if properly provisioned. But to be considered truly epic, a castle should have a second curtain wall, enclosing an outer bailey with its own towers and gatehouse. Why not have a third wall? I'm wondering if if they ever like dug tunnels. Obviously you it'd be difficult and um but like any sort of escape plan for the the king or the highest ranking person in the keep itself at that point. Gatehouses should be positioned at angles to the approach route, so any attacker has to twist and turn rather than make a direct rush at the gate. Why not make them even Towers further and walls away? should that, that now feature sense. stone machiculations for dropping rocks on the enemy. Far more sophisticated than temporary wooden hoardings. The new outer bailey or ward. You see how it's progressing? If any of you guys have one about ships, like ships of war. Like 15th century to, to 19th century, maybe 18th century. Like a episode or a YouTube um, video like this about it. I, I, I would love to watch that. There's more buildings to be brought within the castle's defenses. Not forgetting that a medieval castle is as much a residence as fortification. Perhaps a new grander hall for entertaining your household and important guests kitchen gardens, and extra living quarters. The outer ditch or moat can be flooded with water to create an extra layer of defense. A water moat also has decorative value and can be a source of fresh fish. A final flourish, a barbican, an outlying fortification that adds yet another layer of defense to the main entrance. Sorry, I was thinking water about something. Let me just say what I was thinking about. I gotta go back like 15 seconds and listen, but it would be hard to go catch any castle or fortification like this by surprise. So if your army inside the fortress can't defeat the one outside, then you have to make sure to send someone to wherever reinforcements would be because if they encircle you before you can really let anyone know that you're being besieged, then um, you won't have anyone coming to the rescue. But I'm assuming they'd have scouts and whatnot, and people would go. Yeah, I'm sure it'd be very rare for an army to catch them completely off guard and have no one out messaging. I was just thinking about that. With water to create an extra layer of defense. A water moat also has decorative value and can be a source of fresh fish. A 
final flourish? A Barbican, an outlying fortification that adds yet another layer of defence to the main entrance. This is now a fine and formidable example of a concentric castle. That's nice. Its design will force any attacker well to overcome successive layers of strong defence to reach the final refuge, the keep. Right. You can get through the first, if the second. If properly garrisoned so and supplied, get... a castle like this was virtually impregnable until the age of gunpowder. That's a beauty. As we have seen, there was no single blueprint for the medieval castle. Each was built to take advantage of the landscape, to incorporate the latest military thinking with the blueprint for the medieval castle. Each was built to take advantage of the landscape, to incorporate the latest military thinking and reflect nice regional spot. styles and personal Ooh. taste. The most awe-inspiring examples from the castle's golden age include Crac de Chevalier, the supposedly impregnable crusader fortress of the Knights Hospitaller. It almost looks like you could climb up Dover those. Castle. Oh, that's known nice. The Look at that. England. The key? Known as the key to England. Malbork Castle, the gigantic brick-built headquarters of the Teutonic Knights. By the 15th century, the castle's role was in steep decline, in part due to the rise of gunpowder weapons, such as cannon, but more fundamentally because the feudal world that gave rise to the castle had fallen away to be replaced by professionalized armies and centralized royal authority. It wasn't purely uh, as the age of powerful technology. feudal lords ended. Sorry, so we'll... as the age of powerful feudal lords ended, so too did the age of the castle. Most would ultimately slide into ruin their military role replaced by artillery forts, their residential role taken over by palaces and stately homes, as the age of the castle gave way to the age of the chateau. Thanks again to our video sponsor, Crusader King. Thank you to their video sponsor. That, that is it, right? Yes, it, that was awesome maps and everything. That was such a good video. That if there is one about boats, I would love it. Like frigates or, or whatever. That was such a great video. Epic history TV just continuing to increase reputation in my eyes, um, solidifying their place as my favorite channel. All right, they they just are so good. Um, I think this is gonna be my last one for the day. But if I might make another one. If not, I'll see you guys tomorrow for sure. Join the Discord. Hit all the buttons. That was an awesome video. See you guys next time.